SABC. Live our Olympic spirit. South Africa's news and information leader. This is SAFM. Through five colourful characters, three of them living out their very individual lives in an unnamed public park in Johannesburg, Zaxon Dye explores the plight of women and children in a patriarchal and male-dominated 21st century world. Lord Stewart mourns his virginal companion and regrets he didn't try a little harder to change her state. He then turns to another virgin, the eponymous Lady of Benoni, to help him find Danny, his lost love. Professor mourns the loss of his wife, Tabisile, humiliated and driven out of her community because she was believed not to have been a virgin before her marriage. Majomo mourns the fate of her child, raped as a three-month-old by a man seeking a cure for his HIV-positive state. And running in the background is the case of a spiritual leader accused of rape and defended by the indomitable Madlomo because of his support for the reintroduction of virginity testing. This is Our Lady of Benoni, a play that is suffused with laughter and pathos, and it does leave you with much to ponder. It's written by prolific South African writer, painter and music composer Zeke Sunda, who joins us now on the line. Welcome to SAFM Literature and good afternoon. Oh, hello, Karabo. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. All the better for hearing you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> now, I want to go straight into this issue of virginity, um, because a professor says in one scene um, that uh, virginity is the problem of patriarchy. Um, how did this come to your mind? How did that come to, to my mind? <clears throat> Well, you know, I've been pondering these issues of uh, virginity for for quite some time. Because it has its, its, its perils, you know. Um, in different cultures, uh, people have suffered uh, in the name of uh, virginity. Until one day, fortunately, I discovered a book titled... Um, Virgin or virginity, um, the untouched history, or something like that. I, I forget the, 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 the exact title. But the, the author is Honey Blank, who is a reputed virginity historian. Did you know that virginity has its own historians? I'm not surprised. I mean, it's a big obsession. Yes. So, I discovered many things in this book, you know, various myths of various cultures about virginity, various beliefs, various superstitions. And, and when I looked at, uh, at this whole uh, picture, then it dawned on me that, in fact, virginity is not something that is possessed by the virgin. It is something that is owned by men. At first, it is owned by the father of, or the daughter, and then it is a commodity that is then transferred to, to the future husband. I'm talking here in those cultures that value virginity and that insist that a, a, a woman must be a virgin until um, she, she marries. Hmm. And you also said uh, the story is set in a public park in Johannesburg, and uh, you, you have the three male characters: that is, Professor Lord Stewart and the seller of laughter. Why did you decide to base this around characters that um, that, that, that are seen as indigent, as as people who don't matter, the invisible poor, as it were? Well, you know that just happened by chance, really. Some of these things, you know, when you are a, st- a storyteller, Karabu, some things just, uh, just come together. Let me tell you how this play came about. At first, in fact, um, I was fascinated, and this is some, a couple of months back or even years. I, I was fascinated by the beggars at the traffic lights of Johannesburg, especially the young men or boys who would be there holding uh, placards or some cardboard uh, with some lame joke written on it. 
that's, that's what they are selling, you know. People read the joke and pay some money. So I thought, well, maybe one day I'm going to write a play, you know, sent out around the traffic lights and, uh, and, and the, the, the joke, you know, and that, that, that's going to be, you know, what the play would be about. But then I put that idea aside, you know, I, I copied those jokes because, you know, it was like a comp- competition of jokes, you see. I thought, well, maybe one day I would write the play. And then the Sanchez Kazaki incident happened in Benoni, where this young girl claimed to have seen the Virgin Mary, and many people believed her and went to Benoni on a pilgrimage. I was fascinated by that too, so the perils of belief and disbelief uh, is a subject that I've written about before, and it's something that always uh, fascinates me. Francesca Kazaki instructed her followers to look at the sun, where they were going to see the Virgin Mary. And indeed, some of them looked at the sun, and others actually got blind. I was fascinated by the fact that even those who were blind because of this faith still continued to believe, you know, the phenomenon of blind faith in a literal sense here. So I thought I would write a play about this. And then, of course, the third incident was my discovery of this book by Honey Blank uh, on virginity. The, 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 the title, actually, I remember it now, is Virginity, the Untouched History. So, then it occurred to me, well, well you know, these three incidents uh, about which I, was, uh, I thought I was going to write three plays, I might as well just write one play, just collapse them together and write one play. So that is why then the play is about those beggars, first at the traffic lights and of course, but the main setting of course is the park where they live. And then of course, you know, the story unfolds from there. We're in conversation with Zaik Sundar, this is SAFM Literature with Garabo Kuleng, discussing his latest play, Our Lady of Benoni. Our lines are open, you can take part in this conversation, share your thoughts about uh, Zaik Sundar's ideas and the thoughts around virginity and faith and um, yeah, just the, the, the kinds of lives that, that, that unfold. Um, in, you know, just in particular, give us a call on 891 SMS 34701, 34701, and each SMS costs two rand. There's another character that I also found incredibly fascinating, and that's Matlomo. Uh, she, her child, her child has been, was raped as a baby, and uh, she goes on to defend, um, this spiritual leader who has a very a confabulated name. I think it's Comrade or Leader. Um, wh- why does she cut such a pathetic figure? I mean, you know, she's she's really trying to come out of this this misery and having to look after a child who's got AIDS. But at the same time, she, she you know she she defends this man because uh, she believes in in, in virginity testing. Uh, what are you trying to illustrate with this conflicting character? Well, you see. I think it will depend, I mean, what uh, the reader or the viewer, you know, uh, takes from that or interprets that character. What, in fact, informed that character um, was the issue of virginity testing. And my having spoken with some women from KwaZulu-Natal who were activists, in virginity testing, you know, who, 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 were, who were virginity testers, and in, you know, discussing with them and uh, listening to their reasons for it, their justification for that. Because, you see, in the play, I try, you know, to present both sides. You see that? But of course, it does become obvious, you know, which side I fall myself, you, you, you see. But uh, I present both sides of the argument. So, 
Tomo then represents the side that defends such, you know, uh, customs as virginity testing and why they are still essential um, uh, today. Her experience, of course, as a virginity tester, and then as a woman who has suffered, actually, as a result of wrong beliefs on virginity. For instance, her daughter, who is still a baby, is raped by men who were HIV positive and believed that if they have sex with a virgin, then their, their HIV status would be reversed and they would therefore be, 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 be negative. And by the way, in the play, I do show where that custom comes from. I mean, that belief. Uh, the virgin chores. The virgin chores are beliefs that did not originate with the people in, in, in South Africa here. Those are beliefs that actually come from Europe. And all this, you know, um, comes from this virginity historian that um, I've been reading. But in any event, Mazomo suffered because of beliefs in virgin chores, and her daughter was therefore infected, and she had to leave the village, you know, because of, of the stigma, and to start a new life in Johannesburg. So, you see, she is an advocate of virginity and virginity testing, but she's also a victim of those beliefs in virginity and virgin chores and so on. So that's why then I see this play, in fact, as you know, it's a play about the perils of virginity. And of course, uh, this mostly um, th that particular narrative in the play is, is delivered by uh, the character who, that is Professor. He's the one who reads on the history of virginity and and questions um, the superstitions and blind faith and belief. And then you've got this um, this other character, Lord Stuart, who. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I found him. I, I found him quite funny. Um, he's 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 the white man who who, who begs at the street corner. Uh, professor tries to bail him out a few times, and uh, he eventually sends him to go and uh, see the lady of Benoni to uh, see if perhaps she can help him find his um his lost love that is Danny. Uh, what were you thinking with your construction of that character of Lord Stewart? Well, um. That also actually gives me the opportunity. He's a character who gives me the opportunity to a blind faith. Because blind faith knows no race, you see. The people who went to see Francesca Zaki there in Dinoni uh, were both black and white, you see. Uh, Lord Stewart gives me that opportunity to, to explore blind faith, but also to explore further other aspects of virginity and the beliefs and superstitions um, on this subject, especially now in this case, the religious side of things. You remember that Lord Stewart had this girlfriend with whom they used to beg at the traffic lights, who was herself a virgin because she belonged to this Catholic organization of women, not nuns, but civilian ordinary women who had their lives, you know, to God and therefore had vowed to stay virgins for the rest of their lives. And of course, Lord Stuart suffered a lot uh, because of that since, you know, um, their relationship uh, uh, stayed platonic. And even though that was against his own, you know, wishes and desires. This is a woman then who gets kidnapped, uh, or who leaves, who goes away with, with some other men. And Lord Stuart is pining for her for, her, for, for a very long time. When Francis Kazaki comes into the picture, he believes that if he goes there and prays to the Virgin Mary, her, or his love, will come back. 
Yeah, and um, also Danny's character, even though, I mean, those are the three characters that we don't actually get to meet in the play. They're yeah. present, but um, it, by those who speak about them are Francesca, Danny, and uh, this, uh, this spiritual leader who's, who's going through the rape trial. But Danny's case also made me uh, think about mental illness as well, because yeah. by the sounds of things, um, things went quite all right with her on, the, on that front. Definitely. Many aspects of belief, you know, have been confined by scientists into some mental illness and so on and so forth. So I do explore that, that side of, thing, uh, of things uh, uh, as well. Fascinating play. Um, I'm thinking in my mind, someone like James Unobo should put it on stage. <laughs> do you think so? I think so. I think so. Well, you know, mentioning this novel, it's as if uh, you are a prophet. <laughs> Why? Because when I read this play, actually I had no intention of, of writing a play at all, until this novel directed a play of mine, and I was impressed with his work, then I told him that, well, one day I'm going to write a play for you. So indeed, I got the opportunity then, uh, as I told you before, how the play came about. Immediately I thought, well, I think this is a James Novel play. But unfortunately, after I, I wrote it, he had many other projects. But uh, I, I think that he will still do it because um, the Baxter Theatre in Cape Town is keen on the play. You know, Lara Foote, who has directed my plays before, is very keen on this play, provided is a Lara Foote is only keen on it, provided it is directed by 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 James Moore. So I'm I'm hoping okay. that perhaps um but of course when Lara and James do it, it it will have to be drastically adapted. You know. Why? Because it is very long. That play is almost three hours long. I saw that when it was read by actors at the Baxter Theatre under the direction of Lara Foote. And it went on for about three hours. So, it, it, it will no longer have that kind of attention span. It, it, it will therefore be adapted and then be shortened quite a bit for the stage. But then, that is fine with me. Because this is a kind of play, you know, what is known as closet drama as well. A kind of play that I wrote not only to be performed, but specifically to be read as well. So it is both a read kind of play and a play that can be staged provided it is shortened a bit. And it's very easy actually to shorten it because some arguments there can actually be cut down. Yeah, definitely. Well, I look forward to seeing it on the stage, and I look forward to giving it another reading, because it was an absolute delight to read. And oh, an oh delight I'm so happy to hear that, Garabo. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor. Go well. It is my pleasure. Bye-bye. That's uh, Professor Zix Nda, South African writer, painter, music composer. His works have been translated into here, this more than 20 languages, and have won numerous awards in South Africa, the U.S., Italy, including Commonwealth Writers' Prize for Africa, the Sunday Times Literary Prize, the, uh, the Zora Neale Hurston Richard Wright Legacy Award, and he's also a patron of the Market Theatre Johannesburg. So, yeah, I'm glad I'm not the only one who thinks this would make a brilliant uh, play under the directorship of uh, uh, James Ngobo. And, of course, Our Lady of Bologna is published by Witt University Press, and it's available everywhere. If they don't have it, ask them to order it. Let's catch up with the Olympics now because we are in that spirit. It's the London Olympics 2012 and Manfred Seidler is looking ahead at some games for us. Good afternoon Manfred, what have you got? Well, very good afternoon. The women's hiking road race has gotten underway half an hour ago. And of course, they have got uh, three riders in there. Ashley Moorman, Patio, Robin de Hood and Janet van der Wankel. But it's going to be a tough ask for them to uh, make a breakthrough as the, the Dutch Marianne Foster is the hot favourite to win this. She's won virtually every single major cycling title you can imagine. World Championships in the Cyclocross, the Track, Gold Medal in the Points Race, and Track Cycling Dating Olympics. She hasn't won this Olympic road race yet, so this is the big one that she's gunning for. Um, so 
really, really looking out for her, but also defending the Olympic champion, Nicole Cook, there, from Great Britain, hometown favourite.